Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Anne and I, we want to welcome especially all of you here tonight, especially Bishop Jonathan, all the clergy, visitors from Wimbledon and other places, Clive's former parishioners, those watching online, all from the local community and our users at our centre here. And of course, everyone from our congregation at St Cuthbert's and St Aidan's. We're thrilled to be licensing Clive as our priest in charge and having a wonderful celebration with you all this evening. We're really looking forward to joining with Clive in the ministry of spreading the gospel in this place. I'm on the domestics, so if the toilets are out of the door that you came in, just up the corridor bit and to the left, and there are some more up on the second floor. Um, the fire exits are in the middle through the preschool there, through the door you came in, and through this door over here. Um, after the service, refreshments will be served, and we hope everyone will stay to get to know each other. And the drinks will be at the back of the church, and the food will be brought in up the middle. Uh, please don't be backward in coming forward. There's an awful lot of food in there. So we all want to share all that we have with you. And so we invite you to stand for our first hymn, which is Love Divine or Love's Excelling. From God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Well, how fabulous is this? As we gather to welcome Clive into his new ministry, so a community that lives from love and in love. 
welcomes you, Clive. As we remain standing, so we'll pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for Clive and for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please would you sit. Reverend Father in God, we bring greetings from the parish of St. Mark's Wimbledon, where Clive has served. We wish him every blessing in this new ministry. We pray that the benefice and diocese will be enriched by his presence and that he will know joy and peace in his life here. Father in God, following prayer, consultation and discernment, Clive has been chosen to serve as priest in charge for this parish and is now here to be licensed for that role. Thank you for your greetings and introduction. Young people, come on. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. Tell us, who are you and why you are here? I am Clive, a servant of Jesus Christ. I have come to serve this parish and together with you all to worship and love God with my heart and soul, mind and strength. How do you come among us and with what confidence? I come knowing nothing except Jesus Christ and him crucified in weakness, fear and in much trembling. Let us then work together for God and seek his love and strength. Thank you both. Clive, I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You have been chosen to be priest in charge of St Cuthbert's and St Aidan's Copner. Do you believe that God has truly called you to this ministry? I believe that God has called me, and with God's help I will serve faithfully in this ministry. Would you turn to the congregation? Would you please stand? People of God, is it your will that Clive should serve with you in this parish? It is. Would you like to come back? We keep a few moments for silent prayer. God our Father, Lord of all the world, we thank you that through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that each may be an instrument of your love, and give to your servant Clive the needful gifts of grace, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please would you sit. The reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered nor will they come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I would create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard in it no more. 
Never again will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his years. He who dies at a hundred will be thought a mere youth. He who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed. They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. No longer will they build houses and others live in them, nor plant and others eat. For as the days of a tree, so will be the days of my people. My chosen ones will long enjoy the works of their hands. They will not toil in vain or bear children doomed to misfortune, for they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb will feed together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. But dust will be the serpent's food. They will neither harm nor destroy in all my holy mountains, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. This is a reading from the Gospel according to St John. When the two days were over, he went from that place to Galilee, for Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honour in the prophet's own country. When he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the festival, for they too had gone to the festival. Then he came again to Cana in Galilee, where he had changed the water into wine. Now there was a royal official whose son lay ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went and begged him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The official said to him, sir, come down before my little boy dies. Jesus said to him, go, 
your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and started on his way. As he was going down, his slaves met him and told him that his child was alive. So he asked them the hour when he began to recover. And they said to him, yesterday at one in the afternoon, the fever left him. The father realized that this was the hour when Jesus had said to him, your son will live. So he himself believed along with his whole household. Now this was the second sign that Jesus did after coming from Judea to Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Two sermons. The first one, Clive. Spend as much time as possible with Jesus. Knock around with him. Listen to him. Receive from him and encourage all those with whom you have to do, to do just the same. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And as I'm being paid an hourly rate, <laughs> you did brilliantly, you two, didn't they? Shall we just... So the second one, uh, I want to tell you about Frank. Uh, Bob, uh, I think, and Debbie are the only ones who've heard me share a little bit about Frank. Frank was uh, a Catholic uh, lay person in his 80s, and he'd recently been bereaved. His wife was a wonder, an absolute wonder. And the Catholic Church was just next door to St. Peter's in Ash. So to, he, the parish priest used to say, just a stone's throw away. And he'd say it with a mischievous look, because he was Chelsea and I was Fulham. A stone's throw away. <laughs> Frank used to pop in every day after Mass, knock on the study window. And if I was busy, I'd say, buzz off, leave me alone. But most of the time, I would welcome him in. And he taught me about coffee and cardan. He used to say, let's, let's do coffee and cardan. Cardinal Cardan was a hero of his. And his little method is what I, I commend to you with all my heart today. What fantastic readings. We've got coffee and cardan. Say, so come in. Frank had been a community development worker with the Catholic Church in Liverpool for years and years and years. And the approach he took was this, see, judge, act. That came straight from Cardinal Cardan. We learn best when we learn from each other in the body of Christ. We've got so much to give each other, so much partnership to discover. I think probably we are less good than we need to be in that. Find out who your partners in the body of Christ are in the city. Bob will put you right and point you in the right direction. But they're all around us, longing to serve Christ together. See, judge, act. Have a really good look. Clive, everything that we have learnt about you so far. At interview, Clive blew us away with his clarity, with his imagination, with his gentleness, more ready to listen to us who were desperate to hear from him than he was to speak. We are so pleased you're here and we know you'll have a really good look at what's here and what's already happening. This is a fabulous Christian community. Um, when I think of this place, I think of one word, love. And if I had a second word, I'd say life. In other words, it's full of Jesus. 
because that's what you find when you knock around with him that he's got more love to share with us with anyone who will be open to it and life like you cannot get anywhere else love and life so the first thing is see have a good look judge sounds really waggy finger that's not the kind of judge that cardinal cardan had in mind when he put this method together for the catholic workers fellowship which really made huge changes in society judge means have a really good look and then reflect on the scriptures uh, reflect with your brothers and sisters in christ if this is how things are if this is what we're seeing in our society in one another then what together should we be doing and of course that kind of judge is more like discernment more like the process that brought you to us clive it was purely beginning middle and end it was never competitive it was all about who is jesus calling to serve with the people of god here and we believe with all our heart it's you see judge discern ask for the holy spirit to show you and lead you and guide you always make that a priority and then have a go act see judge act it's not bad and if, if if it doesn't go quite right and in the diocese of portsmouth often things don't go right <laughs> sorry we should have told you that before you came. <laughs> but i saw the taxi still running on the outside there no, but the following Jesus has never been about getting things right. It's about hearing his voice and saying, I'm in. We follow you. We trust you. Think, think of the gospel passage. I want to end with the Isaiah passage, which is just breathtaking. But the gospel passage. Why did the official think of Jesus when his dear son was close to death. Why did he think of Jesus? I think, I've got no authority for this, but I think he was at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. Because it's not far. Uh, Amanda and I checked in the car just to, it's not far. And, and you know what happened at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. Jesus turned great big pots, bigger than that font, bigger than that font. They were full of water. And he prayed to his father who loves him. And the water was turned into wine. And the wine was really, really good. And I reckon the official had only just sobered up. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, wherever Jesus is, there's life. New things begin to happen. New confidence comes in a community. We find ourselves loved, not by getting things right, but loved just for who we are, delighted in, rejoiced in. That means you can try things out. Have a good look, see. Come to a judgment together, discern together, and then have a go at things and see what happens when they go wrong. Try. try. We will be there to cheer you on, to, to try again to pick up the pieces and go forward because this is the way of Jesus but it's the Isaiah passage I, I really want to end with I must tell you two about this Florence I can't remember your name I'm so sorry what's your name Leaf lovely there's a place between where Clive has served in Wimbledon and us here called Farnham, Farnham, and in, in Farnham there's a place called the Lion and Lamb Yard, Lion and Lamb Yard. Do you remember the reading we had? It, it said the wolf will lie down with the lamb, didn't it, and the ox will eat straw. It'll, it's a vision of a new world where no one gets hurt, where love is the rule of the day, where animals that would sort of eat up the other ones just don't do it anymore because the kingdom of God has come 
in all its fullness. That's what we're longing for and praying for. The kingdom has already come because Jesus is raised from the dead. But the kingdom will come in all its fullness. Uh, and the lovely thing about the lion and lamb yard is they sort of mixed it up a bit. It's the vision of Isaiah. And if you go into the lion and lamb yard, you'll have to ask someone to take you. Because there is a piece of public art. Piece of public art. And it's about that, that tool, the, the base of it. And then there's the most huge lion. Beautiful, carved in wood. You can look it up, even look it up in the service if you'd like. In your, if you whip your smartphone out. Uh, the lion is huge. It was uh, black. It is, has been redone. It's a different colour now. And tucked into its tummy is a little lamb. It's the most beautiful thing. And the first time I saw it, it reduced me to tears. And my wife had to stop me climbing on it. <laughs> she said, you are a grown-up. <laughs> That's for others to judge. I waited till another day to climb on it when she wasn't there. <laughs> but you see, there's something about that. What I think Clive is going to, to bring, one of the things that we picked up, he, he had to preach for us, he had to do a little presentation, all based on what the people of God here had said were the needs of the parish. It's a lovely process. You pray and you put something out and then someone like Clive says, I think that might be me. And we saw his imagination. And you see, that's straight out of the prophets, Clive. I think you're straight out of the prophets. Because you see, what Isaiah did, uh, the people of God at the time when Isaiah spoke were in what's called exile. They were away from home. Uh, they had a cost of living crisis. All, all the moorings of their life had been removed. They'd been really badly treated and beaten for years. And most of them never thought they would return to their hometown. But when Isaiah saw judged and acted, he saw with the eyes of faith. He saw knowing that the God he served is the God who liberates the God who brings good news, the God who will return lost souls to their home. And so he imagined all sorts of things. You've got it in your text for tonight. Take it home. Read that Isaiah 65. Remember it comes when people must have thought he was mad. How can this happen? How can this possibly happen? And yet it did happen, and over a period of time, it took a long time, they returned, returned. And we long for the day, the same vision, when the lion and the lamb shall cuddle up. And there'll be no more violence in the world, the world which we ache in prayer for, Gaza and Ukraine and the violence inflicted on Israel initially, and then appallingly, in a most disproportionate way, upon the people of Gaza. The day will come, and we're part of it, when the resurrection of Jesus will be shared, and the whole world will be transformed, and God will be in all and through all. There will be peace on earth as there is in heaven. So we pray the prayer each day, as in heaven, so on earth. And we welcome in Clive, not to see Judge act on your own, but to see with this incredible Christian community, to make judgments together, without fear. You have nothing to fear. You're loved in advance. You're forgiven always. This is the gospel. You're seen, known and loved, and so are your people. So what's to wait? What's to wait for? Go forward in love and change this world with him. And know as you go that the angels and archangels are rejoicing with you. In the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I shall now license Clive Bruce Gardner, clerk in holy orders, as priest in charge of this parish. But first, the oaths must be taken and the declaration of assent made and subscribed according to law. The Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church worshipping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, Will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Clive Bruce Gardner, Clark, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. I, Clive Bruce Gardner, Clark, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, his heirs and successors, according to law. So help me God. I, Clive Bruce Gardner, Clark, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Portsmouth and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God.
We, Jonathan, by divine permission, Bishop of Portsmouth, to our beloved in Christ, Clive Bruce Gardner, clerk in holy orders, greeting. Whereas the benefice of Port C. St. Cuthbert within our diocese and jurisdiction now stands vacant, we do hereby grant you our license and authority to serve during our pleasure or until the admission of an incumbent to the said benefice, whichever period shall be shorter, as priest in charge of the said benefice and to perform all ecclesiastical duties belonging to that office. In testimony whereof, we have hereunto set our hand and caused our episcopal seal to be affixed this 11th day of March in the year of our Lord, 2024, and in the 14th year of our consecration and the third year of our translation. Clive, receive this cure of souls, which is both yours and mine and his before ours, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May I? The Spirit of Truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word and works of God and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Jesus says, my peace, I leave you. Clive, will you bless us, delight in us, and celebrate God's presence here with us? With gratitude to God for calling me here, I will gladly give thanks for you and with you at the altar, in your homes, and in this community. Will you praise God with me, even when rejoicing is difficult? With the help of God, we will. Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened. Clive, will you love us, pray for us in our tiredness, our burdens and our loss? With God's inspiration, I will love you and pray for you. Will you allow me into your lives? Forgive me my failings and pray for me as I seek to care for you. With the help of God. Jesus said, unless you become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Clive, will you always remember that each one of us is a child of God? Inspired by God's humility, I promise to try. Children of God, will you teach me? With the help of God. Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Clive, will you stand in solidarity with those in this community who long for healing and justice? Yearning with God for the good of all people, I will. And will you challenge me and work in partnership with me as we work and pray for justice here and everywhere? Members of the PCC, please stand. Jesus says, follow me. Clive, will you help us to discover what discipleship means for us? Teach us and learn with us and lead us out into the world to make new followers of Jesus. Praying for God's guidance, I promise to support you and lead you. 
Will you stay faithful even when we face challenges or difficulties together? Clive, to help you fulfill these promises, we now offer you gifts. Here is God's word. Your inspiration and your strength. Here is water for new life and blessing. Here is bread and wine to nourish and unite. Here is oil to heal and transform. Token and tool of the practical ministry we share. And here is a token of our love for you and our promise of prayers to sustain you. The deanery colleagues, please stand. Most importantly, here are your people. People in this parish, will you support, encourage, and pray for Clive as your priest? We will. Could I have the church wardens come forward? Lovely. Would you like to kneel? Yeah, and some ministry colleagues. And uh, Leif and Florence, would you come? And if you just put your hand on Clive. You do, do you mind? No, it's fine. That's it. You put your hand on. We're going to pray for him. That's it. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Almighty God, who for the salvation of the world gives his people many gifts and ministries, stir up in you the gifts of his grace and sustain you in your shared ministry in this deanery and diocese. And the blessing of God, almighty in gentleness, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Archdeacon, standing in, Archdeacon, we have now licensed Clive as priest in charge of this parish. Would you now place him in his stall, or the nearest thing to it? <laughs> Clive, I place you in your designated seat. The Lord sustain you in this office to which you have been called and daily enable you to grow as a faithful servant of his church. Amen. Amen. Remember, Lord, what you have done for us and not what we deserve. As you have called us to your service, make us worthy of our calling in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Here is your new priest. Will you warm him? Welcome him warmly.
Clive, from your deanery colleagues, we're so glad you're here. And may we learn together and pray together and laugh together as we do seek to do God's work in this community. Clive, it's a delight to be here this evening, and on behalf of all the lay people of the deanery, I welcome you here. Clive, on behalf of City Life Church and the One Body Unity uh, Churches Together group, we want to welcome you. So it's fantastic to have you joining us here in Baffins, but also in Portsmouth. And I want to declare over you, number 624, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. We are richly blessed to have four ward councillors with us who are going to collectively come and welcome you on behalf of the local community. This has not been rehearsed. <laughs> right. um, on behalf of the residents of uh, both the Baffins and the Coppin Awards, we welcome you humbly to our humble abode in this area. Feel free to reach out to us at any time and we will work with you to make sure our area gets to be as good as it can be. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Wonderful. Well done. Thank you. Thank you for those lovely welcomes and uh, I'm really looking forward to working with all of you. I think the next part of our service is prayers, so I invite you to sit for our prayers. First of all, we bring to God this great and ancient city of Portsmouth. The motto of the city is heaven's light our guide. And so we pray that the light of heaven would indeed guide decisions made that affect the lives of all those who live here, so that all may thrive. We pray for the City Council and especially the councillors who represent this parish, for business, community and faith leaders, and especially for Bishop Jonathan. We give thanks for the St Cuthbert Centre and for all the many groups who use it many of whom are represented here tonight. We pray this place might be a place of friendship and light, of hope and happiness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We give thanks for the heritage of these churches, of St Cuthbert and St Aidan, and especially for the Venerable Ali Kerr and the Reverend David Power, and all other ministers who have served here over the years and during the interregnum. And we pray for the Church of St. Mark's, Wimbledon, as they seek a new vicar. May these churches and this whole deanery be nurturing communities of grace, where all are treasured, all are welcomed, with no exceptions. Where risks are taken and mistakes are made and forgiveness is sought and freely given where love is found not to be easy, but real. And laughter is commonplace because we see that sometimes we take ourselves too seriously. Where people forget about the God they don't believe in and find the God who believes in them. Lord, in your mercy. In our first reading from Isaiah, we had a picture of a world where there was no more conflict where peace and tranquility were so prevalent that even the wolf and the lamb would live in harmony. We know that today's world is far from that, and so we ask that women and men of peace might come to the fore, such that stubborn and violent hearts might be changed and lasting peace and justice might emerge. We pray especially at this time for Haiti, Yemen, Israel, Palestine, Russia and Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. 
And in tonight's reading from the Gospel of John, we heard how a man approached Jesus to ask him for help. So we too come to God just as we are and ask him to bring healing and wholeness. It may be that you know someone who is in need of help at this moment. Perhaps someone who's dear to you, who is struggling over some issue in their life. I invite you to think about that person now. And if it feels right to you in the quiet, you might like to ask God, however you understand that word, to help that person now. And lastly, what is on your heart today? If you had one prayer, one hope, what would it be? St Ignatius encouraged people to talk to God as one talks with a friend. So what is on your heart now? Loving God, you know us better than we know ourselves. We offer you our thoughts, our hopes, our prayers, our dreams. Lord, in your mercy. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. It's traditional as well at these services for the new uh, priests to give out some notices. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, I think the first thing I want to say is just thank you so much for, to all of you for coming. Um, to those representing various community groups, uh, to regular members of the churches of um, St Cuthbert and St Aidan's, and also uh, to my uh, friends and family uh, stretching back decades and decades. It's, uh, it's just so lovely to see. And thank you especially for those of you who I know have travelled a long way to be here today. I'm really grateful. It means a huge amount to me. Um, my first service here is tomorrow at 9.30. And then on Sunday we have the St Cuthbert's Patronal Festival at, at 10 o'clock. And just to reiterate that uh, notice that the wardens gave at the beginning about uh, food and drinks afterwards, I hope you're able to stay for that. And thanks to everyone who's contributed to that. Our final hymn is Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer, during which an offering is taken for the Bishop's Discretionary Fund.
you're collecting such a lot of money. <laughs> In the gap, while I was singing, I, I wonder if there are people here who have met Clive tonight and think, that would be magnificent to be a vicar. <laughs> maybe younger, maybe older. I wonder if God is calling you to put your hand to the plough and share in the ministry of his church. While we bring up the, the gifts, think about that one. <coughs> Lord Jesus, receive these gifts which come from our heart with great thanksgiving and use these gifts to your glory and to build up others in love for we ask it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, take up your cross, deny yourselves, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.